Ugh. Here we fucking go. All right, everyone, we are back with the fifth installment into the KZ multi views but in case you haven't been here this is a small series where i give reviews and or commentaries on the three main live action spider-man those being toby Maguire, andrew garfield and tom holland all leading up to the release of spider-man no way you just made me bust if you aren't new to this series you would know that so far i've commentated over spider-man 1 spider-man 2 and spider-man 3 and a little bit of the amazing spider-man 1 but from here on out it's straight reviews on these movies i need to put these out quick so i'm gonna just tell y'all what i like what i don't like and what could have helped the film so without further ado it's time to review the amazing spider-man 2 wait wait that that rhymed damn i got bars no bars none not a bar It shouldn't be a surprise if I say that this is probably the most controversial Spider-Man movie. It also had so much studio interference, but at the same time, it had potential. I'm perfectly fine with people defending this film as everything is subjective, but there's a specifically weird part of the Spider-Man fan community that defends this movie just to shit on the MCU iteration of Spider-Man, which I gotta say might be the dumbest shit ever. But after watching this though, I gotta admit, it really isn't that bad and honestly it has y'all know this movie is a dumpster fire anyways i'll talk about the bad things first to get this long ass list out the way off the bat i hate the first scene it feels totally out of place from the rest of the movie this mission impossible shit was not it every villain in this film is absolute buns there's literally no redeeming qualities from these villains other than maybe electro's gap fixing itself that shit was kind of fucking funny jimmy fox is a fantastic actor who was given the most amateur script and character development. I also hate his design. Oh, but Keezy, it's just like the ultimate electro- Shut the fuck up. It's trash. Sometimes he doesn't even look like Jamie Foxx in this shit. Sometimes he has like a glowing head and the suit he gets is like a shrink-wrapped latex suit. It's weird as hell. Green Gob- <coughs> I'm not calling this dude Green Goblin. <clears throat> Harry Osborn's villain design is absolute garbage. Literally look up meth addict on Google and I guarantee a bunch of Harry Osborns will pop up. I hate how they try to jam Harry's existence in this film. I didn't buy it in 2014 and I sure as hell don't buy it now. I feel like they could have added a short scene to help this so-called friendship. Imagine the beginning scene in the airplane was instead replaced with a scene similar to the beginning of the first film. Peter Blaine in a game like hide and seek, but instead, in this scene, it's with a young Harry Osborn. It would have made the reunion feel more authentic, at least in my opinion. Norman Osborn is such a great character in the Spider-Man universe, and in his first appearance, he just, he just fucking dies. <laughs> and he's dying to the genetic disease that he explains to Harry in the movie. And this whole time, Harry didn't know, but once Norman tells him, he conveniently starts getting these disease manifestations, which is such lazy writing, by the way. Also, Harry takes down like two armed security guards in here, which I gotta say. See, now that's some bullshit. Peter also denies giving Harry his blood to possibly help his disease because he doesn't know if it'll hurt him, which is stupid because the motherfucker is already dying. Hey, bro. I'm good. Bro, you, bro. you okay? I'm good, bro. You geeking, bro. I'm good. Bro, bro. But I'm good. I'm good. There's like this mysterious guy who's trying to build the Sinister Sticks. Bro, Sony was trying to move way too fast. Now, y'all know I adore Peter and Gwen, but in this movie, they are so fucking confusing. Peter wants to keep his promise to Captain Stacy, but Gwen is like, no, break that. But then they break up. Then Peter's like stalking her, and then they get back together. Shit's all over the place. And speaking of Captain Stacy, that PTSD shit had no place in here and it was pretty much useless. You could have took it out of the movie and the movie wouldn't have changed. It disappears in the middle of the movie but suddenly comes back towards the end abruptly. They should have just left it out altogether. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I forgot she's in this movie. <laughs> Rhino is absolutely useless, and they made Paul Giamatti such a cartoonish villain, and it is impossible to take him seriously ever. Andrew Garfield's accent is like 10 times stronger in this movie, and it sounds so fucking goofy. My dad left a briefcase. That's all I got, briefcase full of junk. Whatever, I don't know, I try to think about it. But that's a minor nitpick. I also hate his quips in this movie. There's like funny bits in here, but at times he puts civilians in danger, and sometimes he just doesn't give a fuck. I hate how the people of New York are consistently watching these life-threatening fights held off by barricades like it's a fucking wrestling match. And lastly, the thing I hate the most about this film, we find out that it was indeed Peter's father that developed the spiders that turned him into Spider-Man. And he finds out through these gold coins that he accidentally finds through like breaking a calculator. And these gold coins lead to a subway under the ground. I'm not joking by the way. But this entire sequence is so conveniently written. It's just lazy writing once again. Peter Parker getting bit by Spider-Man makes Spider-Man so resonating. Because it feels like anyone could have been Spider-Man. The school nerd is the last person you expect to be a superhero, so when it does, it makes you feel like you could be. And in this movie, the way Peter's father develops the spiders and how it matches his blood, it really breaks the entirety of Spider-Man for me from this point on. The character I love felt absolutely destroyed, but now let's talk about the shit I fuck with. I think as bad as the movie is, it is more enjoyable than the first film to me because of that. The first movie kind of just goes through the motions of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 1 with a couple of changes, but really doesn't provide its own like unique feeling, you know? And this movie absolutely does that. I think a big reason why I enjoy this movie is it has its own vibe, it has a flavor that is different and that was refreshing. I really like the introduction of Spider-Man after the whole Mission Impossible scene. It radiates that feeling that the hero of New York is back roaming the streets once again. They could have just made Peter take down some goons instead of Rhino because Rhino being in this scene kind of leads the audience to believe that he's a major contributing villain, especially since he's a popular Spider-Man villain. But he's just thrown away pretty much completely after this. Also, in that scene, we get our first look at the new suit. And Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Now, I will say this suit is up there with my favorites easily. But it does feel like they held back on the design. It feels like they ripped it straight out of a classic Spidey comic, which certainly isn't a bad thing. But they could have done something like more, I guess, to modernize the suit. I don't know, it just feels like they stuck with a really safe design, which I feel could have been improved. But after that first monstrosity, this was an absolute goldmine. Oh hey, that's Stanley. What's up, Stanley? I obviously like Gwen and Peter's relationship when it's not confusing at least. The score I also really like. It's really good to me, and I've noticed that a lot of people don't like it, Electro Sting specifically. I'm not a fan of the voices on a score, so yeah, I would prefer just an instrumental. But as for the main theme, it is a huge step up from the first in my opinion. There's also this small scene of Peter patrolling New York and he helps a kid that's getting bullied and fixes his science project. This is that fucking pure Spider-Man shit and I love it. Every action scene in here is pretty much top notch and I think many could agree on me that it's probably, at least to me, the most visually stunning Spider-Man film to date. The cinematography is really good, I love the color grading, and the visual effects in here won't age for like another three decades. I especially love both Electro fights. The one in Times Square a bit less though because of how stupid these New Yorkers are surrounding a fucking life-threatening fight once again, people running upstairs that lead to nowhere. Also, Electro doesn't even get mad that he's shot, he gets mad when Spider-Man shows up on all the LED screens, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> this scene isn't the best, but it gives great visuals on what the Spidey sense looks like. And that shit was pretty cool, not gonna lie. The final fight with Electro though, I really enjoy. They add these subplots during the fight though, of two planes on track to colliding with each other and Aunt May's hospital going through hell, which is like, 
Too much shit is happening. Also, Ame is like a newly hired nurse or whatever, and she's literally telling like the entire hospital what to do. I just want to point that out. But whenever the movie is focused on the fight with Electro, it's pretty fun and visually. Ah, what the fuck? Y'all already know what happens after this fight. This fight with Goblin is really quick, but Mark Webb directed it perfectly in my opinion. You feel the tension between Gwen being there and at any moment something could... This shit hits me like a truck every single time I see it. I'm not even gonna lie. I've seen many people hate the web hand, but it literally sends chills down my entire body when I see it. The symbolism here makes me so anxious and to me provides the imagery of what Spider-Man wants. He wants to grab her and save her. He loves this woman and would sacrifice anything to... Damn, she low-key snapped harder than Thanos. In all seriousness, it's scenes like this that show Andrew's acting chops, and the boy does crush it. I've said time and time again that I believe Andrew, so far at least, is the best actor out of the three Spider-Man. And this just proves my point even more. I don't really like how Gwen hits the ground though. I feel like what makes this event so dramatic in the comics is Peter lives with the guilt of not knowing whether or not he killed her. Whether it was her neck snapping, from the web or whether the height of the fall either way was going to kill her but nonetheless i love this scene and this scene absolutely delivers on the heartbreak and the shock it seems like this to remind me that spider-man movies can be bad but there's always good in them him being motivated by replaying gwen's speech was such a great touch as well and it reminds me of the time peter played uncle ben's voicemail after his death and i appreciate that parallel the final scene is also pretty good with the kid Peter helped earlier in the movie from being bullied, standing up to Rhino, dressed as Spider-Man and this is more of that Spider-Man shit that I absolutely love. Peter comes back and it really does feel like the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is back patrolling New York and the movie ends with Spider-Man about to clock Rhino shit which they also put in the trailer. Yeah, Sony is some fucking idiots. This movie though did have potential and it showed throughout the film from the visually stunning action sequences to the jarring performances and absolutely great hero moments. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 seriously has some great within it, but it's unfortunately weighed down by its convoluted villains and its inconsistent writing. But with that comes two films that tried to step out of the box and I would say they did. I would argue they did well for the most part. Studio interferences and behind the scenes conflicts really stopped this franchise from what could have been astonishing. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 isn't good, but it has almost a meme-like quality to it. It's something you appreciate while laughing unintentionally, and for that reason, I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man 2 a pleasurable 69%.